Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm the Campaign Marketing Manager here at eLearning Brothers. Today, we're going to be talking about workflow learning, enabling the five moments of need. This is going to be a really great session. I'm really excited for this one. This session will be recorded, and we will send a copy of it out to everybody who has registered. So be looking for that in your email later today. Uh, if you have to check out early, you'll be able to view that there. And if you think of somebody that might need this, you're welcome to share it out with them as well. We will also be posting this on our blog um, later in the week, maybe early next week. So you can check it out there at blog.elearningbrothers.com. If you have questions or comments during the webinar or would like to interact with our presenter, please use the questions panel. That's part of the GoToWebinar uh, control interface there. Uh, it's labeled questions. We'll get to as many of those as we possibly can. If there's a question that we're not able to answer live, we will try to reach out to you after the fact and, and make sure that we're giving you the, the, the attention that you need and answering the questions that you are looking for. If you have not already, please feel free to check out our community, the Rockstars community. That is at rockstars.elearningbrothers.com. It's a very uh, robust community. There's a lot of discussions there about everything e-learning focused. So we're talking games, uh, authoring tools, LMSs, uh, all of that is there. There's lots of discussions about learning development, learning design, things like that. So again, that's rockstars, plural, dot elearningbrothers.com. All right, so we have a fantastic guest with us today. We've got Bob Mosher, CEO and Chief Learning Evangelist of Apply Synergies. Thanks for joining us, Bob. We're really excited to hear what you have to say. And without further ado, I'm going to pass the screen and the time over to you, Bob. Thanks, my friend. Let me get this going here. Be sure I got the right one there. I think I do. Let me know when that pops up. I see it. Looks great. Brilliant. Oh, my gosh. Thanks, Andrew, so much for that introduction. Bob Mosher here. So excited about the next hour or so we've got together with you. Uh, as he said earlier, by all means, friends, put things in the question area. We'll do our very best to get to them. And in fact, I'm going to make you use it quite a bit. Uh, I want to get some feedback from you. Hear what you're thinking about some of the stuff we got to talk today. Very excited about the topic. Uh, I have been in this industry, a little background, for 38 years. Uh, I can see from the snow on the roof, as we call it uh, for us old people, uh, that I've got. Andrew doesn't have enough of that yet, young man. Um, but uh, I've been at this a while. Started out teaching eight-year-olds. I was a third grade teacher, of all things, believe it or not. And now I have uh, been in the adult arena for well over 25 years. Actually going on 30 years, I should say that. Uh, and man, it has been a journey. And, and my goodness, talk about the last two years ish of a journey has this just been remarkable one of my favorite uh starts of a book is it was the best of times it was the worst of times you may have read that book um but i i i, I that, that for me encapsulates the last 15 16 months of our industry and frankly our lives right i mean the irony of we've, we've probably had this conversations about the pandemic haven't you with your friends and family and colleagues that there there have been horrific things in this experience clearly tragic and hurtful and, and all kinds of stuff. At the same time, I have seen remarkable things out of humans and human nature and, and learning and development in the last several months. I've had the blessing of talking to thousands of you across the world, thanks to things like this technology, and which I wouldn't have done, there you go, without the pandemic. Um, and so it's been just a remarkable experience. And I'm so looking forward to the topic today because this has really been hot. It has come into the limelight, although I've been at it for 10 years myself, uh, in my company, Apply Synergies, but it has really been um, remarkable to see how this has changed the landscape of learning. And so I'm so excited about what has been the most transformational thing in my 38 years, friends. And I've seen it all. I was one involved in some of the early years of e-learning development, 1991. How's that? 92. Some of you may not have been born in 91 or 92 that are on this call. Um, and so I've been at this for a night. So I've seen a ton of stuff come and go. Laser disc players. How's that? I don't know how many on this call remember what those were, but I, I got it. I've seen I've seen us try to do a lot to learning. I have seen us try to do a lot to learning, both with technology and with methodology. And I have to tell you, in my 38 years of doing it as a practitioner, um, nothing has rocked my world like what we're going to talk about today, because I believe uh, and I'm biased with this, but I believe this is why we do what we do. When I got into this, when I want to teach eight year olds, I didn't want to affect their classroom. I wanted to affect their lives. When people came to my Excel spreadsheets, how about that? I'll go back. Lotus one, two, three courses. How's that? I didn't want to have them have a great time in my classroom and like the lunch and think I was entertaining. I wanted them to go back to work and use spreadsheets to be better performers, right? But but I didn't I, I didn't do that. I wasn't able to do that 
beyond the four walls of my classroom. So folks, get, get buckle up. It's gonna be an interesting uh, 54 minutes we've got left. Um, but again, I wanna be awful careful about today. This is not about uh, instruction, friends, if, if I may be honest. This is a webinar, right? I'm gonna give you a lot on purpose. You're gonna get a recording of this. So you'll be able to, and there's my email on the screen. You see, I'm, I'm looking to my left here because I've got two monitors, not because I'm reading the email or anything. Um, but you see my Bob at Applied Synergies there. Let's get this conversation going, friends. Let's have it go beyond this day. But I, I, again, I wanna be awful careful. This is not about instruction today. This is informational. I wanna share some ideas. I wanna get you thinking. And, and honestly, as, as the workflow learning has done for me as a learning professional, I might put you, I might put, set you back a little bit. I, I might get you back on your heels a little bit. Um, it did me. When I started this well over 15 years ago, I, I, I struggled for the first couple of years because it, in some ways, as we'll talk about, it was so counter to what I had been taught through my math. I have a master's in education in the United States. Um, I, I had never heard any about any of this stuff. Didn't know how to do it, didn't know how to create it. I didn't have one PowerPoint or one chapter of a book on this thing. But I will tell you, in the last several years of my, my career, it has been um, nothing shy of remarkable. So let's get at this and see how you're gonna do. So friends, if you look at my screen, uh, tons of ways to talk about this more. Obviously, this recording, but I'm giving you a whole bunch on the screen right now. Uh, we do have a certificate program. If you're interested in learning how to do this from a methodology perspective, it's a five-month-long online uh, virtual classroom where you uh, work on a project to understand how to do this. Again, that's not what today is about, although I'll talk about the methodology holistically. I'm not going to pretend to teach it to you. Um, we do have a Performance Matters podcast. We are, we are on our 53rd episode. So like this wonderful e-learning brothers thing that you log into, if you want to get it subscribed to that, boy, we have a ton in there. And my favorite part of that podcast, you guys, is that it's, um, we've interviewed well over 30 organizations, 30 organizations that are doing workflow learning uh, intentionally across almost like their whole curriculum. So uh, a lot of people to listen to, way smarter than me. <laughs> we have a performance support community. You see it in there at the top right. You're welcome to join that, it's free. Uh, and then of course the website, uh, which you see a picture of there, take a look around the five moments and uh, workflow learning if it's helpful. Here we go. So today's discussion, what are we going to talk about? Number one, why should you care? This is an important bullet to me, friends, because I don't think in L&D we, um, well, I want to be careful here, we, that, that we research what we do enough. Is that a fair thing to say? You know, uh, gamification, one of my favorites. Now, by, by the way, friends, I am not blasting gamification. Um, micro learning. Uh, what else? Uh, you know, it, it, where I'm going with those friends is, by the way, I think those are all remarkable and have great potential. But if, if you're as old as me and you've been around long enough, I think sometimes we wander into things um, ahead of uh, planning them, right? So ahead of understanding how it impacts how we do things. We just add it to our toolkit and then it, it might backfire on us a little bit, right? So this is an important bullet. Why is this important to do now or ever? And, 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 and part of what you're going to have to do with this, friends, if you want to adopt workflow learning as, as an as a approach, you're going to have to convince others to do it with you. You're going to have to convince those that you serve to want this thing because it is different. You'll see in a moment than anything you've probably ever made before. So we got to be able to make a case for doing it. Bullet two, what are we creating here? Um, again, I want to be careful. This is not a course, but I want to be sure you understand conceptually what we mean because there's a lot of words lobbed around out there in our business, including workflow learning. And I'm all about definition. If I have one gripe against our business in the 38 years I've done it, it's that we don't define stuff well. We like words. If you put 10 learning professionals in 10 different rooms, you guys, and you said, tell us what micro learning is, I guarantee you, you're going to get 10 different answers for what micro learning is. Right? So, so if we're going to help others get this stuff, and do it, we got to articulate what that is. So we're going to talk about that. Here, oh, this third bullet, I want to be careful how to design it. This is, again, not the course, but basically the theory. How's that? And then last, by all means, next steps, uh, where to go from here and, and get going at this. So why should we care? Okay, get ready. Get on your keyboards, friends. I want you on your keyboards, in, and I want you to in that question uh, area that our dear friend uh, Andrew just talked about, right? Because I want to ask you a question. I want you to look at a chart here and look at the question at the top select the two most effective approaches you have used to learn remember and apply the greatest performance challenges in your life you are a learner now friends not an e-learning designer or an instructional designer 
And in the question pod, would you pick two numbers from that list? You, in your life, what helped you learn, remember, and apply the greatest performance challenges in your life? Put them in the question pod and enter them. Send them to me. Pick two numbers. And notice nine is other. There might be something from the list that's missing. So I'm going to check this out over here. And Andrew, I hope I'm doing it right. That I can see their answer, or their questions, or their answers. Pick two numbers, friends. I should like hum the Jeopardy theme or something. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Uh, the numbers that I feel like I'm seeing the most are four and six. Awesome. You thing. With that? Yep. Okay. Good. How about others, my friend? Uh, there's quite a few threes also an eight uh an eight or a nine come in periodically um one person really? says none of the above these are only delivery mechanisms got it okay that's arguable yeah we'll talk about that means to an ends here that kind of three and an eight two and a six three and a four yep brilliant okay thanks buddy appreciate it so let me look at the slide. I want to talk to you a little bit about this, friends, because this is important stuff to do. We don't, I would argue in our business, we don't talk to our learners about learning enough. Listen to what I said. We talk to them about maybe courses or classes or I don't know how they liked something or, but do, I don't think we talk to, and we talk to SMEs a lot. We'll talk about them in a bit, but do we talk to our learners enough about how they actually learn? What has helped them? I have done this survey now for four years, friends, across the globe. I've done it across the world. I did it at a conference a couple of years back with 1,200 of us in the room. I even did it with eight-year-olds once. Had to change number four because eight-year-olds don't know what on-the-job training means yet, right? But watch the screen. Did you hear the numbers Andrew listed? Watch this. Watch the screen. Again, obviously, I, I did this PowerPoint before I came on here. Watch the, watch the clicks, friends. Almost unanimously. That's and those two are number one and two, almost every single time. Followed closely by these two, right? Did you hear the numbers? Think about the numbers you voted for, and, and then you may have picked nine or another, right? These win every time, ninety percent. Listen to this, you guys. For four years, pre pre COVID, pre pandemic, for four years, I've done this with thousands of you, every nationality, every ethnic nationality, every everything socioeconomic, you name it across the whole deal. These four have won, watch the screen. These two, these groups never do, never do. Four, one, two, and five, one, two, and five have never, ever come close, not a third, not a half, not a quarter to winning, right? Now, I wanna be careful here, because look, e-learning's in there. <laughs> So is the classroom, instructor-led, virtual. Virtual is very big right now, right? Virtual instruction. So guys, so what I'm care. And by the way, I spent the first 25 years of my life building the green stuff. See the green squares? I spent 25 years doing that. That was my career. I had a company that did that. So friends, I want to be awful careful. I don't think those are bad. I think I think those are terrific. But my point is, how much blue stuff are you making? How much of your deliverables, when you when you meet a learning solution for those you serve, how many of you build, listen to this, first blue stuff and if and then green stuff if you have to. Listen to how I said that. You build blue stuff first, things that support the blue, enable the blue, and then green stuff if you have to. All right, that's where we're going today, friends, because guess what? The blue stuff is workflow based. The green stuff is not workflow based. Again, it doesn't mean it's bad. We'll talk about that in a moment. But let's talk about how do you make this shift to the blue? So, ever heard these words before in your life? Someone walks in your office as a learning professional and says, I would like five days of training on blah, 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 whatever. Or five e learning or three e learning courses or now six VILTs, whatever, right? You guys, this is actually kind of an interesting statement because look at the top. If you're going to shift to the blue, you have to be seen and you have to, you, us, L&D, has to see things differently than we do today. For me to become a workflow 
architect, which is what I call myself, a workflow designer. You guys, I had to start seeing what I did very differently. Because if, if you don't get out of these, um, the world of uh, an e-learning based thing only, remember I said only, or classroom based only, or now VILT based only, you're never gonna get to workflow. Watch this thing. On the left, this is, I'm gonna show you an example of how bad this gets, right? On the left, five types of instructional treatments used in the classroom. These things in the bottom are kind of what classrooms do. This is ILT. I'll start with ILT, right? Look at this poor example that I was asked to look at once. Look at that course. Five days, six and a half hours with breaks long. Look at that. One, th <laughs> one thousand plus PowerPoint slides. So, so Andrew, could they do this in the, in the question for you? You guys see the things on the left from present content down to review. I stood in the back of this room. I stood in the back of this room for those five days and I took, I, I recorded every five minutes what the instructor was doing of those five things. See what I did? I, I, and every five minutes I looked in the, I looked around the room and said, oh, they're, uh, they're doing a show, showing, showing how right now. Get, get the idea? So Andrew, do this and guess what one in this classroom did present content? You see the five things in would you put in the in the question what do you think won the day in this five day thousand plus powerpoint slide course between present content discuss showing how practice with feedback and review yes pick one of those and give it to it give it to andrew in the question pick one of those choices what are you seeing andrew all right so the early ones the early leader is definitely number one presenting content a couple people are saying practice with feedback um Thousand PowerPoints, 33. Yeah, definitely lots of the the two winners here. Present content is number one, and practice with feedback is uh, number two. Check out the slide, guys. Excellent, Andrew. Thank you. And by the way, Andrew, get ready. You're going to be doing a lot of this in the next 45 minutes. Okay. <laughs> get ready. So, guys, look at this slide. Guess what? Here it comes. Ready? Look at that. Look at that. 80%. Well, and by the way, I don't blame that poor instructor. A thousand slides. Look at the stats. They had to do 30 to finish. I did the math to finish in five days with a thousand plus PowerPoints. They had to do 33 slides an hour and a slide every 1.8 minutes. Look at Andrew. Look at Andrew shaking his head. Right. That poor That's instructor. So fast. It, and guess what, you guys? It, listen to this. This is what this is what this is what should, you might be laughing and chuckling, but this should actually terrify you. This was a course in the military that people died from if they couldn't do it. Think about that for a minute. Right? This was a course that if you failed to perform, bad, real bad things happened. Now think about this poor thing. Right? This was literally a terrifying course. But you guys, here's the problem. If we get stuck in this, look at my, my screen. Look at this. If we get stuck in this cover it thing, this is this is a world we got to get out of, friends. You're never going to get into workflow learning if you're asked to make five days of things, three learnings of things, nine VIL, VILT of things. That is a cover it request. This right? Cover these things in X days. That that's not workflow learning. That that's content sharing. And by the way, I, I get, look, there's feedback in there and there's review, and but look at the statistics. Look at the statistics. 5% practice and feedback, because they just did not have time. Zero review, zero review. Look at that, you guys. 90% was discuss and, and present. That, that's so sad. But this is the corner we have painted ourselves into when we are, as my buddy says, a one hit wonder. If if all we got are green pants, don't ever expect someone to order blue shirts from you, right? So if you want to get out of the you know five days of anything business, you got to have more options. That's why we're here today. So There's what a comment things, here also that universities do the same thing? Oh, good lord, friends! This is where it starts. Don't get me going here. Remember, I taught third graders for five years. It's I'd argue, Andrew, it starts there, my friend. Look what we do to these poor kids. Plop them in a room for six, seven you know, hours a day. No, I'm not saying that I want to be awful careful. I did it for a profession and I have a daughter who does it too. I'm not saying that they're not good. I'm not saying that they don't work hard. I'm not saying that the classroom isn't fun or engaging, but that how many kids go home and can't cut a pizza into, into eight pieces to divide it up evenly so eight people can eat them, right? That's I can I may learn fractions in the classroom, but doing fractions at home is a whole different 
whole different thing, right? And in the end, please, I, what I'm, I'm fighting for here is that's the business we are in, you guys. We are not in the fives on the evaluation business. We're not in the 7,000 people clicked our e-learning business. We're not in the everyone passed the compliance test business. That is, those are means to ends. The reason we hope those things are consumed is because when they get done, they can make spreadsheets better or not get killed in a foxhole or, I don't know, be a good leader. You fill in the blank, right? So, so let's get going. Three things have to change then if you want to get out of the slide before. And number one is we have to be seen very differently. We have to start asking very different questions. When someone comes in and asks you for five days or something, have you ever said this? Five days, really, five days. Why five days? Tell me why you pick five. I just wanna know why you pick five days. And then you'll get, well, I, that's all I can afford. Or that's all, that's all the time I wanna give people away from my, away from the gym. <laughs> Those are not instructional answers. Those are not performance answers. We have gotta be seen very differently for people to come to us for a different deliverable. Number two, Oh, God, I get hate letters for this, but I'm going to run at it anyway, right? I love ADDIE. You may know what it stands for, A-D-D-I-E. I think it's terrific. It doesn't make workflow learning, friends. It just doesn't. And and, and that's okay. It, it, it's okay. But where I'm going with this is, do will we, and, and I want to be careful, will, will you still ADDIE stuff? Sure. Because you'll see in, in a moment, the five moments, by the way, includes the classroom. It includes e-learning. Absolutely does. But those do not cover all the way to performance. So we, we got to get into new design approaches that are out there in addition to the repertoire we have now. Number three, oh boy, this is an entire workshop. We can come back for this one another time. <laughs> but here's, the, here's, here's what will whack you right in the face. The minute you dip your toe into workflow, here's what you're going to start doing, you guys. You're going to start using their content. You're going to start brokering user-generated content. You're going to start asking them to maintain, listen to this, the content that we have always owned and maintained. Look at that last thing, governance and maintenance. It's got to be on the slide because that is a world we are not, the, the kind I'm talking about is not a world I was prepared for when I got into this. I had rev cycles and I had, that's not what I'm talking about, friends. When you start using their stuff and putting work in the workflow, you got to be ready to help them help you keep that stuff current. Big, big deal. So what are we looking at? Here's my pitch slide, you guys. This is what I hope seals the deal, right? Look at that. When people go into a classroom, or excuse me, that's the wrong word. When people are asked to start a new job or be a good leader or be a great doctor or you fill in the blank, right? They have to do three things to get there. They have to know stuff. They have to apply it, move it into being competent with it, and they got to keep up, right? You agree? That's kind of the journey there pandemic or not, that's the journey we've always been on. Many would argue that last thing's been accelerated beyond belief, but the reality is this is, though, folks, what training does. Training is great at having you start with nothing or something and leaving with more of it. And, and you might practice it in other things, right? Here's the problem. I don't think that's enough because for the first 20 years of my career, this is where I stopped. This is where my journey ended. But friends, people have to transfer that. We're not in the in the mastery business. We are in the competency business. But look what happened. Look what happens to mastery without intentional practice or support. See that blue thing trying to get competent? Look at the green thing. You may not remember my name by dinner time, right? I mean, this is kind of how it goes, right? So what are we doing there? And when I say doing there, I don't mean just like you give them a good e-learning course or an LMS or a book. I'm saying, what are we doing intentionally and designing for in transfer? And look at this. Welcome to this world. Are you kidding me? Content is changing at a rate we, I would argue, can't keep up with. How's that? I would argue to keep up in a e-learning or course only model, only model, we can't. Information is changing ahead of our ability to redesign, change. Can't do it. Can't do it. So how do we get there? Well, here comes, friends. This is why you're here. <laughs> we got to add this thing called performance support or a workflow framework. And notice what notice where it runs. Look at it. It spans the entire chart. Train, transfer, sustain. It is in all three areas. And notice there is still training. So, but watch this. And Andy, would you do this for me again, friends? Get in your get in your question pod there for me. Watch this chart on your screen, will you please? 
it's going to change in a moment. When you add that green bar at the bottom, three dramatic things change in this chart. I'm gonna, you ready? When you add that green thing to the bottom intentionally across train transfer sustain, three things happen. All right. Look at the chart on your screen. Can you tell an Andrew, Andrew, would you help me here, my friend? Would you tell Andrew one thing that you saw change in that chart? I'll go back up. See the first one? Here, here's what happens when you add workflow learning to the model. Andrew, can you give me what you're seeing there, my friend? We're getting um, people still typing. Um, okay, long-term long -term sustainability. Yep. Mas mastery sooner, steady increase and sustainment plateau, uh, transfer increases, um, sustain sustained mastery. Good for you. Um, yep. Yeah, lots of those kinds of things. There's one or two people just looking for a definition of workflow training. Maybe we can just do it right now. Thank you. Identify that. Yes. Thank you, Andrew. Great question, friends. That's what I'm gonna give to you now because you're right. Remember, I talked to you earlier. We got to be about definition. So look at my screen. One. Listen to this, you guys. On average, trainings reduced by half. Statistically, and I, we, I've, I've done hundreds of these things, hundreds of these designs. On average, training is reduced by half, if not more. Number two, my favorite part, competency comes quicker. Because it's a workflow design model, it's not a training model, like you saw on the slide before. And lastly, probably the most powerful thing post pan well, I hope for post-pandemic, we're obviously still in the pandemic, but coming out of this god-awful thing is that learner's ability to sustain intentionally and measurably is increased, right? So the, the people who ask, Andrew, thank you. What is workflow learning then, friends? Here's your definition. Workflow learning is embedding learning notice and support, two things, two things, learning and support in the workflow to be accessed, look at the word underlined, while doing the work. And I want to be careful here because this is not putting things in the workflow. We've been doing that for years. And LMS is in the workflow. It's not great workflow learning, you guys. And I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not bashing LMSs, but it's not a workflow learning tool. Accessibility alone that takes you out of the workflow to consume, even though I'm sitting at my desk, is not workflow learning. Workflow learning literally happens while you are doing your work. You access what is called a performance support tool or what's been called for years, an EPSS, Electronic Performance Support System. They've been around, you'll see in a moment, for a long time. We just haven't been using them candidly, right? And targeted learning. We'll talk about what that means in just a moment. So definition, workflow learning is embedding learning and support in the workflow to be accessed while doing work. You don't stop work to do this. You continue working and, and, and consume it. My favorite example, you guys, if I may, it, it sounds like a crazy one, but any football fans out there, people watch football, NFL, American football. Sorry, friends, American football. Have you ever watched a quarterback come out with that little thing on his wrist that he flips open while he's calling the plays? And that, that that's it. Obviously, this is a non-work example, but that, that meets the definition. He doesn't run over to the sideline and stop, doesn't call a timeout after every play. While he is doing, while he's performing, he looks for supporter learning and then continues on and, we hope, performs better or performs well. Now, I know, crazy example, but, but see the difference? Not workflow learning would be timeout, 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 run over to the coach, so let's talk about the play. Combat doesn't happen. That's not workflow learning, right? So five moments of need. What are we designing for? That's the journey. I want to be sure I, I separate this here. That was the journey. Train transfer sustain is the journey of which workflow is predominantly in transfer and sustain. Those, those are, that, that's, that's an experiential model. But what do we shift our designs then towards to do it? There are five moments of need. Dr. Conrad Gottfriedson, my my beloved business partner, in his 50 years of research and work as a PhD, found in his work that there are five moments of need that learners meet, need met from what we build during train, transfer, sustain. And notice, when they have to learn for the first time, they don't know anything, or they have to learn more than they already know, that is a formal, works great, training model. 
But the reality, though, is, and remember your vote. Remember when you all voted on things that got you home? Just in time, workflow training, right? Trial and error, coaches and mentors. They live in three through five, friends. Trying to remember or apply when something goes wrong, when things change. Look at that fifth one. Are you serious nowadays? Right? The, here's the thing, friends. As Khan likes to say, you can't train your way out of three, four, and five because they're in the workflow. If you're training your way out of them, you're taking people out of where they mean are the most meaningful and hoping that they can go back and transfer them. Remember the chart, remember the drop off, remember the green death spiral of instruction, right? This is met with performance support in EPSS. So we have to add a whole new tool to our toolkit and check out this slide. You know, the linear slide's one thing, but the reality, friends, is the five moments don't happen linearly. They happen as the day happens, as the year happens, as the week happens, right? And we've asked learners, and their favorite is apply. Every day, your learners get up to apply, you guys, every single day. Friends, they get up to try to keep their jobs, get better, perform for their bosses, perform for their employees, perform for their customers. They're applying all day long. And in apply, they have to learn new stuff. And in apply, they have to sometimes learn more stuff. Things change. They get themselves in trouble. <laughs> right? They, but here's the thing, you guys. Till I saw this 20 years ago, think about your own work. I was in my deliverables, in what I was building, I was targeting new and more almost only. I hoped it helped with apply, change, and solve. But I was really designing new and more only. Here's the shift, you guys. Look at this, look at this. Design for apply first. Don't build for new or more first. You, you're gonna, I'm not saying you don't, but you design first for apply, and we'll talk about how in this next part, All right? So what are we creating? Check this out, a new definition and a new deliverable. When I go into my clients, I have a consulting business, Supply Synergies. When I go into my clients, I don't go in to build a course. I, frankly, I don't even go in to build an EPSS just yet, right? I go in to build a performance deliverable, something that enables apply, and I might build training. I want to be sure you heard that. I used to go in, friends, to build an e-learning thing or build a classroom thing. Before I even heard anything, I, that's what I did. But now I go in to build, look at this definition, look at this. Check that out, read it for a second. Look at that. Imagine if you made that first. Think about it, friends. Imagine if you built that first for your performers, for your learners in leadership, in customer service, in Excel, I don't know. I, I've, I've built this for everything I just told you, soft skill, hard skill, any skill, right? Listen to this, guess who said this? Anyway, does anyone know who said this? Andrew, can I ask you a question? Anyone in, in, in uh, the question pod put who, who, who's this quote from? Anyone know? Anyone guess Nobody Andrew? Nobody knows. Well, here's why you were uh, okay. A couple of guesses. Uh, Rosset, Mager. <laughs> those, um, are great, those are great guesses. Love Allison Ross. Another She's person right. said Bob Mosher. Oh, stop, stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, guys. Look at my screen. Look at this. Look at this. Gloria Geary, 1990. The reason I always hide this is, I don't think we're doing this now. I, I would argue that I don't know if we're making this now. With all the cool tools we have, with all, all, the, ama and all the amazing stuff, I don't know if the hammers we're swinging now are making these houses just yet. Look at that thing on your screen. 1991, a lot of people like to call people thought leaders that I don't personally think are thought leaders. This lady was a thought leader. If you can say something in 1991 that's still not being done in 2000, what are we, 20? Holy cow, right? You got to read this book. See, see, it was called, look at boring title, Electronic Performance Support Systems, written in 1991. It's about this thick, 
tiny little book. I've read it four times in my life. Remarkable book, right? So do this for me, you guys. Would you say, and, and Andrew, say, on, help me out. Look at that definition and send Andrew one word or like a couple words that are the most meaningful to you in that paragraph. Sorry, Andrew, you didn't think you're going to just hang out and watch. Integrated is one of the first ones. Good. On demand, orchestrated, guidance, um, minimum support. Ooh, That's look at that. that one's popping Love up that. a couple times. Um, assistance, uh, advice, access, um, a lot more minimum supports coming in. You know, you don't um, love about all that you're reading. No, none of you picked training. Did anyone write training? No, I don't see any training. In, oh, there's one training, one or two there training. You there you go. But yeah, so so again, this is this is so remarkable to me, my friend, because this 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 lady is so on point. Look at the words that I love on your screen. Look at them. Oh, those are so powerful to me. Right? Orchestrated. That's job security, by the way, for those of us in this business. On demand, integrated, high performance, minimum support from other people. It, guys, this, I, I, what I love about this paragraph, I have it in my office on my wall because this is what I think we are called to do. I, guys, I don't care what tool you use. I, 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 this is what we, we get up in the morning to do. And, 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 and because we live in the world we live in today and the wonderful folks sponsoring this webinar, you can do remarkable things with that electronic services part. Imagine in 1991, she had things like overheads. Anyone remember overheads? Andrew, you probably have no clue what I'm talking about. Overheads though, Over, right? Look at, look at the world we live in today, friends. We can do this on the screen, but it takes a little bit of design. So let's talk about orchestrated for a second. This is the design part. Look at all these things in this list. Where I'm going with this slide we're on now, friends, is this is not, please hear me. This is not a discipline of a lot of stuff. Let's just give people a lot of electronic services, like, like Gloria said earlier. Notice, look at the guys, look at the word I look at the word I put a box around. Orchestrated set of. Orchestrated to me, Andrew, means it's it, like an orchestra. It is intentional and structured and designed, right? This list is not. I want to be awful carefully because for the 90s, that was a, that was a decade of stuff. We made a lot of stuff and piled it on, pile it on. Look at, look at SharePoint. Is SharePoint in there somewhere? Hey, look at SharePoint. God bless that thing, right? But a lot of people hate SharePoint which by the way, isn't SharePoint's fault. SharePoint's great. What people hate is a lot of, we, are, we thought more was, was better, right? But go back to Gloria's definition. Look, on demand, integrated, orchestrated, right? She, back in 91, she was saying, do, don't do this when you, can, when you can eventually do this. Because this, this is chaos, friends. This is not while working. This is getting in the way of working. This is making a lot of stuff available in the workflow that Gloria, she's since not in the business, obviously, but Gloria would come in and say, you didn't orchestrate anything. You, you just made a lot of stuff clickable. That is not what she meant in 1991, friends, right? What does she mean? How do you design it? Well, here's some principles. A couple things. You got to embed it. And notice two clicks, 10 seconds. This is a world of brevity. The workflow is a world of very immediate needs. Apply, change, and solve are, 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 are I love a buddy of mine once said, those are needs of urgency. Listen to that again. New and more is not always a world of urgency. But apply, change, solve, solve, friends. Solve. If I am in trouble, I don't want to read a book. I don't want to sit through a five minute, a 20 minute video. I don't want to take an e learning course. I, I want an answer because I am in a solve moment. So it better be embedded. Look at principle number one, you gotta embed it. Number two, getting it's one thing, getting it there's one thing, contextualizing it is another. It's gotta be tailored, we use that word a lot, to my need at the time and the context I am in, not just a lot of stuff. Number three, I only want enough to get done. Look at number three, my favorite principle. I only want enough to get done and go back to work. Listen to that. This isn't a piling on principle. It's a minimalist principle. And number four, boy, here we go. I'm going to say it again, but again, we're not going to go deep here. If it is not trusted, 
curated and current. People get really mad. People get really mad, right? Because they're in the workflow, a customer is screaming at me on the phone, and I click on this thing that's two days, eight weeks old, and I'm reading it to them. And friends, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So guess what? Hmm. Learners don't like that. <laughs> they don't come back to that stuff a lot, right? So embedded, contextual, just enough, curated. What do I mean by these two? They're as far as I'm going to go today. Again, remember, we got 18 minutes left. As far as I'm going to go today, here is the Addy of this world, if I may. You got those of you know what ADDIE is, this is the design. You have to first, if you're going to do workflow learning, friends, guess what? You have to know the workflow. Think about that for a minute. And I, can I share something with you? Till I discovered this methodology, I'm gonna share with you quickly today, I realized I didn't know the workflow of my learners. I knew what they wanted. I knew what an SME thought was important, but that doesn't mean I knew the workflow that my performers lived in every single day. You cannot make workflow learning without understanding the workflow. Then you gotta decide what to teach, the critical skills analysis, you have to build a plan. Again, I'm not gonna do all this today, but I wanted to give you the structure, friends. Again, this is this is sharing here, it's not teaching. So let's talk about this workflow thing. This is huge. And, and again, a world I didn't wander into till about 15 years ago. Workflow, what is it? Well, it's made up of things you do. <laughs> it's made up of something called tasks. We've heard tasks before, right? Uh, but, I didn't, I, but I didn't really know them this way, to be honest with you before. Right, tasks make processes, right? So a process has a set of tasks and tasks have steps. Guys, when I, every time I show the slide, people are like, well, great, that's great. Well, if I, can, if I can share with you, we don't know it as well as we thought. I, I'll just say, I, mean, I, I learned I didn't, right? I know, again, I knew what an SME who came into a room with me for two days or something told me was important. But I didn't leave that exercise, friends, understanding this. I, I guarantee you, you did not. I did not, right? So an example, process marketing landscape. I have to, if I'm a sales rep, I have to assess the marketing landscape to do my job. That's a process that I have to complete. Guess what? It's made up of a bunch of tasks. I have to define the market. I have to identify the customer and market need. I have to segment the market. I have to prioritize the segments. Notice the verb. Those are doing, those are tasks that I do. And guess what? Those are made up of steps, right? This is, this is, this, but again, friend, you got to understand, look, by the way, notice, I'm not talking about whether I'm gonna teach it all yet. I'm not talking about whether it goes into an e-learning product. I'm not talking about whether or not it goes into an EP. I, 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 I am in the analysis part of the workflow. And when I'm done, I leave with one of these, check out my screen. This is what is called a workflow map. And notice it's not linear, it's not numbered, it's not called lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. No, 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 this is, and this is an example from an auditing uh, process that we did this analysis with. And, and it may, and if, if you're an auditor out there looking at this, you may go, oh, that's not auditing. Well, guess what? That's because this is, I didn't, I didn't analyze your workflow. I analyzed the workflow of the people I was building my solution for. And when we got done, they said, yeah, that's, and here's what they said. Listen, and you'll, this is what I love about this. They'll say, yeah, that's, that's, that's my job. That's what I do. That's, you have to hear that and have defined that. And note, look at the circles, the arrows, the back and forth, the, right? This because the workflow is not A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, right? Workflow analysis. Then you have to decide how you're going to disseminate that content. And so what you do here, friends, is you do what are called the performance support pyramid. This is how we taught. This is how you write lessons for once you know the tasks and the processes. In this lesson, you will learn, right? That's an objective. That's for training. But guess what? It doesn't work for workflow. In workflow, you take that pyramid, you guys, and you flip it. Because the difference is, here, listen to this, in training, we have to set context because they're, they have left the workflow to learn, which is terrific, by the way. Here's the exciting part. 
in the workflow, you don't have to set context because I'm in the context. I'm, I'm doing the work. A lot of people ask me, they're like, Bob, how do you get people to, to use an EPSS? How, guys, the question shows that you don't get it. You don't have to help them. They use it because they, they're trying to work and they can't do it. They, they're, they got themselves in trouble and they can't get out. They, they, they realize they're behind and they want to kick, they want to catch up. Remember, apply chain solve. And, and they want something that's going to get them there in a evolutionary way. They're not looking for in this lesson you will learn, you guys. They're looking for the five steps to perform the task. This is the hierarchical design pyramid of performance support. You start with the context at the top. You then help them with the task. You give them background knowledge if they need it to perform the task. And then look at these next layers. If those don't help, you give them a whole bunch of other stuff. Reference resources, learning resource. Remember that, remember that slide earlier that had just all the dots on it, all the bullets? That is not orchestrated, you guys. This is orchestrated. This is what Gloria talked about. How do you orchestrate? instruction now again i know there's a lot under this and i apologize but the goal today is to, is to help you understand the principles of which you design for this is a radical shift in my work when i started trying to design for this andrew any questions out there yet how are we doing uh there's uh some comments um bob is a workflow engineer i want to be like bob <laughs> when i grow up um <laughs> But no, I mean, okay. Uh, I think I think you're you're spot on. We're all following along. Got it, friend. Okay, say it and say it. Remember, and guys, there's tons of time after you, you're gonna get my email again. Tons of time to, to to as the dust settles, you may watch this again. Ask questions. So so here's the thing, friend. I want I want to put you in a, in a place in time. Now I know the workflow, right? Remember the map earlier, and I have an idea of the tasks that support those, some reference resources I might have, but now I have to architect the experience. That wasn't architecting the experience, that was understanding the experience that the stuff I build goes into. There's a difference, right? Boy, if I can tell you in my 38 years of doing this, if there was one instructional um, approach that rocked my world, it's what I'm about to show you. Because the common question we get is, what goes where in the workflow? You, you said we still teach. How do we know? Do we still teach all the stuff you just covered? You don't, because guess what? You don't have to. Anyone know where this is? Andrew, would you, would you look in your question? Can anyone in question in the question area? Anyone know where this picture is? And it's not Philadelphia, by the way, if someone picks that. Berlin? No. Rome? Paris? No. Close. Oh, well, kind of close. Uh, Istanbul, mm -mm. Prague, Dubai. Those are Vatican, all good places, but no. Nope. Belgium. <laughs> yeah, Belgium. Square. There you. Who's ever said that? You can say their name. Are you allowed to say their name? Who said your father? Uh, okay, a lot of people did. We got oh. Tim, Melody, Christine. Okay. You guys, all you said. That's Trafalgar Square in London. Why am I saying that? Because, quick story. Dr. Conrad Gottfriedson, who came up with the five moments of need, was in Trafalgar Square one day. And, and was going to fly back to Salt Lake where he lives. He lives in Salt Lake City, Utah. And he went into a bookstore in Trafalgar Square and he found these books. Look at these books on your screen. And you may not remember what books are. And you probably remember what a book is. But we used, <laughs> but we used to like print things in paper and it had a, had a cover. And they're in the Smithsonian. It was, they were the cool things. But he, he saw these books, you guys. And remember, this is a PhD in instructional psychology. This is a PhD. In, and he sees these books and goes, are you kidding me? Who, who, who wrote this stuff? In a weekend? Learn to learn to windsurf in a weekend in a book. There were 16 of them. He bought all 16 books. Bought all 16 books. Couldn't believe this. Someone had done this. And on his flight home, he decides to read this one. Look at this one. He decides to read "Learn How to Scuba Dive in a Weekend" because he just wants to, right? And look. So while he's reading, he comes to this word: borrow trauma. There was a word in, the, word in the book called borrow trauma, and he looked it up. Look at that definition. Isn't that helpful? Look at that. Look at that. That was right in the book. And then at the end of the definition, you guys, he saw these two words. And when he saw those two words, what he said was, you know what? Maybe I'm not going to learn to scuba dive with a book in a weekend. 
<laughs> and he said, he goes, he goes, Bob, I had the, I had, he goes, I had, I had the most incredible epiphany in my forever years of being a PhD in it, is that we don't pivot on criticality. We pivot on importance. Think about that for a moment. When we get SMEs in a room, we ask them, tell us what's most important. And, and they love that word, right? And he came up with this wonderful rubric, you guys. This is called the critical skills analysis rubric. And what it basically does is it says, look, when you're designing for the five moments, when you're going to put together your strategy of how, what you teach and don't, remember the training reduced to half? The reason training reduces to half, friends, with an EPSS is because you don't have to teach it all. It's in the reference you give them. It's in the EPSS you give them. But you still should probably teach stuff because borrowed trauma reading in a book would probably kill you. Right. So look at one, two, three. Look at the things written under two, three, one there. See the rubric on the left? Minimum impact. Those it might be embarrassing or or you might lose half a day. You might lose five minutes of time or I don't know. You might have to bother your neighbor. Right. But in the end, it doesn't hurt anything. Look at number. Look at number seven. Look at seven. Catastrophic impact. Irrever ir impermanent. People die in number seven. People die in a number seven if they fail, right? So guess what, you guys? You only teach in your e-learning, in your classrooms, anything that's a five or higher. Anything that's a four or lower, I'm going to build an orchestrated set of electric. <laughs> Remember Gloria Geary's thing? I'm going to build an, and those EPSS is across the whole deal. It's in the four, it better be in the four, five, six, and sevens because they're terrifying. But they still should be taught. But on average, you guys, when you do this analysis, we see five days of instruction go to two because it may be important, but it's not worth the time to dedicate to instruction. Because here's the thing, you guys, here's my favorite thing that I've learned from this whole thing. And this was kind of taking my 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 instructional pride down a bit. Classroom ain't the best place to learn stuff. E-learning not the best place to learn stuff. I don't get mad at me. You all voted, remember? You all voted in my second slide of my presentation that you picked trial and error, on the job, coaches and mentors. You did not pick those things. So here's the deal. Why wouldn't we put as much there as we can? Think about it. Why would we put it? Why would we not design intentionally to put as much learning and support where people are performing without hurting themselves as we can? And that's what this lets you do. Here's an example of a rubric, friends, that was a revi we always take that rubric from the page before and we tailor it to this was for manufacturing. Look at the look at the choices on the screen. There were catastrophic things, possible loss of life or a limb. Look at that. Look at number seven out there. Right, but look at look at minimum. Yeah, one hour downtime, uh, minimum cost. No one gets hurt. Right, there are tasks that happen on a, on a manufacturing line that are ones. In fact, guess what? There's a lot of them. There are things that happen on a manufacturing line that are sevens. But everything is not a five or a seven or important. Well, it's all important, but it doesn't kill you. Right. So, how you doing? Have I terrified you all enough yet? Right? So guys, here's 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 my here's what I'll leave you with. You will still do e-learning, but you'll do it different. If if you would if you adopt this and look at it differently, what I can tell you in my journey, I'm way older than all of you. I've been doing it longer than all of you, most of you probably. Right? What I have learned is you still make that stuff. There is still moments one and two. There will always be new and more moments, but that is not why we do what we do, and it is not what the learners need predominantly they want us to journey into the workflow and help them there through an intentional design approach and tools like epss and many of the ones that the organization is sponsoring this offer you but friends you got to use them differently listen to me you got to use them differently or you won't build different things All right there's a lot of saws to saw wood but if you only saw with one of them you're only ever going to cut wood that way Right. So 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 the brilliant people that brought this webinar to you have remarkable tools. But if you always use them to pound the same nail, you're not going to get here ever. 
But I can tell you 20 years in that you can use these things very, very differently and do some remarkable stuff. That's me. That's the help I talked about earlier. That's my email. You can bother me all you want. I hope this has helped. Let's not end the discussion here, right? Let's let's do what's right for our learners and uh, let's wander into the workflow once in a while as opposed to places we may not have been before. Andrew, thank you. You've been remarkable. Sorry for the work today, but you did a great no, job. This is great. This has been great. Thank you, Bob. So, yes, the email there, uh, continue the conversation, Bob at AppliedSynergies.com. Um, we'll keep it up for just a couple more moments. Um, a couple questions that have just popped up. Uh, could you remind us what EPSS stands for? People want to buy the book, and uh, we want to be reminded what that all stands for and where the book is. Excellent. Yeah, the, the, the EP, EPSS is Electronic Performance Support System. And that is the name of Gloria's book. I, I also wrote a book that you're welcome to maybe look up to uh, on the same stuff. Allison Ross, it was mentioned. In fact, friends, if you want to email me, I'll, I'll kind of email you my reading list, if you will. Allison Ross wrote a great book called uh, Performance Support and Job Aids. Great book. There's some remarkable stuff out there, but I, I didn't even, I, I didn't have my, my bookshelf 15 years ago. But again, Gloria Geary, 1991, but the book is still for sale, Electronic Performance Support Systems, EPSS. Excellent. Do you typically typically find that organizations <clears throat> have already documented their business process, level one, level two process maps, things like that, or do you often need to do some process mapping? Good. Um, that's a great question. Them. Yeah, that's a great question. Here's what I always do, you guys. Can can I? And I'm gonna, in this. I'm gonna say this among friends. When I do work for rapid workflow analysis, if existing business processes have been done the way that person just described. I'll be honest with you, I find that a lot of them are really not representative of the true work. Boy, I hate to say that. I really hate to say that, but they're not. So here's what I always say. If you got process maps, bring them. Bring them on. Bring them to the workshop. Bring them, and we're going to put them up on the wall. We're gonna, but be, but to, here's what I always say. To um, confirm them, humor me for a half a day or so, and let me ask you some questions. And you guys, if I dare say, Eight times out of ten, we get to lunch and they're like, oh my gosh, we're those are not right. Those are not correct. They don't, they're not really what they don't because if I may, you guys, very often those are built top down in organizations. They're not built worker up. And I hate to say it, guys, honestly, because billions is spent on that stuff. I mean, billions of dollars is spent on these process mapping things. So, so just confirm them. Sometimes they are right, but by all means, friends, do the work to confirm them because you got to get it right. Excellent. I'm going to take the uh, the screen back for you for me for a moment. You had talked a little bit about some of the things that eLearning Brothers offers. One of the things that we think um, works the best with this five moments of need, as far as which of our products uh, we can speak to, is definitely the Rockstar Learning Platform. Um, yes, it's an LMS in the traditional sense. Yes, you can put things in it and, and, and get your PowerPoint slides distributed as you wish. But there's also um, the ability to do rehearsals, uh, practice, uh, you know, video coaching, um, learning paths. We have a lot of different things all inside of the learning platform that uh, support what we've talked about today. So you can get a free account at elearningbrothers.com. You can also just give us a call if you'd like to learn more about that at 801-854-5495. I also want to mention we are giving away a $100 gift card to um, one person drawn at random uh, that fills out our survey following this webinar. So as soon as this webinar ends, there's a survey about the webinar and uh, and some other things. Please do complete that survey and we'll put your name in that drawing and we'll send a $100 gift card out to somebody um, this week. So that'll, that'll be a great thing. So again, thank you very much, Bob. This has been very useful. We're getting loads of comments. You've got a ton of fans here. Uh, Everybody loves the, the stuff that you've, uh, you've taught us today and we'll try to uh, apply that to our, our daily working lives. Get a free account. Uh, fill out the survey and get a, a gift card. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bob. And we'll see you guys next time. Be well. Thanks, friends. Be in touch. See ya.